Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Cosmo Mechanics. Today we will be deriving the Hamilton Equation, so let's begin. So here are the Hamilton Equations that we will be deriving. These are the equations you see on top. And for starters, we define P as being the partial derivative of the, of the Lagrangian with respect to the, to the generalized velocity. This is the generalized momentum, right? So it's not always going to be equal to P equals MV. Sometimes the momentum takes on different forms, like in electrodynamics, where it looks like this. So so the generalized momentum is, is not always going to be equal to MV. It's only MV for the, for the case where L equals T minus V, where T is kinetic energy. And the is the potential energy. So we treat uh, P and Q as independent variables, by the way. This is an important aspect of classical mechanics. So P and Q will not depend on each other generally. And our notation here is that a dot, if you see some variable that's a dot on top, that's just notation for, for, for the first derivative of that variable. So if A has two dots, this just means the second derivative of the variable. So that's what the dot means, by the way. Now, Q here, of course, represents the generalized position. And you guys might be wondering why we actually use a Q for that. And the reason is that if we use X, for example, that's suggestive of Cart of Cartesian coordinates. And if we used R, that's suggestive of, of polar coordinates. So we, we want to describe our system in a coordinate independent way, which motivates us to use Q as some general coordinate independent position. Also, Q will have uh, many indices. So we so we so we will have q i technically speaking, where we can have like say q one and q two q three and so on, which represents the many dimensions of our system. So with all that said, let's actually begin. So here are our steps. So how do we derive the Hamilton equations? Well, first we have to use um the, the, the order lagrange equations which says that d over dt of partial l over partial q dot equals partial l over partial q these are the euler lagrange equations now we defined the general journalist momentum as this over here right so this means that dp over dt is going to equal partial L over partial Q. All right. So our Lagrangian in the configuration, our Lagrangian is a function on, conf on configuration space, right? So our Lagrangian will depend on Q and Q dot where q dot is the generalized velocity. Now we want to describe our system with instead with instead of using L of Q and Q dot, we, we want to use L tilde of Q and P. Because remember that we want our equations of motion to depend on P and Q, which means that we want our Lagrangian of instead of being an explicit function of q and q dot, we want it to be a function of q and p instead. So the Lagrangian, where we make it a function of p explicitly, is called L tilde. Okay? So, also, L tilde q and p is going to be defined as being L of q, q dot of q p. So basically what's going on here is that Q dot will generally be a function of momentum. This makes sense, right? Since momentum for most of our cases 
is just mass times velocity. So velocity is just p over m, which is clearly a function of momentum. So q dot will be a function of momentum. So this is how we actually introduce momentum into our Lagrangian. Since q dot is a function of momentum, times being both q and p, that's how we can introduce our momentum into our Lagrangian. So, and since dp over dt is this guy over here, this means that dp over dt is going to be partial L tilde qp over partial q, which equals partial L of q q dot qp over partial q. So let's actually evaluate what this right hand term is going to be. So our right, our, our right hand term is partial L of Q, Q dot, Q P over partial Q. So to find out what this is going to be, we have to use multi multivariable chain rule. So this is going to be equal to partial Q over partial Q, partial L over partial Q, plus partial Q dot over partial Q, times partial L over partial Q dot. Again, all we did here was multivariable chain rule. And though this is of course going to be equal to one, and this is just the this is just the definition of the generalized momentum P. So now we have partial L of Q Q dot of Q P over partial Q equals partial L over partial Q plus P partial Q dot over partial Q. So now we have that partial L, which is this part over here. Let's just bring that down. Partial L tilde of QP over partial Q equals partial L which is again the function of q, q dot of qp over partial q plus plus p times partial q dot over partial q. We can subtract both sides by this furthest right hand term to get the partial l of q, q dot of qp over partial Q equals partial L tilde QP over partial Q minus P partial Q dot over partial Q. So we are just isolating this term in the middle over here. So now we can factor out this partial over partial Q on the side over here to get this thing equals partial over partial Q of L tilde of QP minus PQ dot. And we can actually put the momentum inside of this derivative thing, if that makes sense, because the momentum and the position are independent variables. So we are free to put it inside the parentheses since like partial over partial Q of PQ dot, which is equal to P partial Q dot over partial Q, which, which is exactly what we, what we have over here. So we're free to put the momentum to be evaluated inside the derivative thing. So we now have that partial L of Q, Q dot QP over partial Q equals this over here. Now, if we can recall, we said that DP over DT is equal to the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to position, right? So this, this, this means that DP over DT equals partial over partial Q L tilde of QP minus Q minus PQ dot. 
and we define some quantity called the Hamiltonian to be PQ dot minus L tilde, which means that DP over DT equals minus partial H over partial Q. So we introduced the Hamiltonian to simplify our equation much further, where the derivative of the momentum is just negative partial H over partial Q, where H is the Hamiltonian. So, so this is our first Hamilton equation. So to get our second equation of motion, which relates the position over here, we have to take the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to momentum. So that's going to be equal to partial of L Q Q dot of Q P with respect to P. We can then just expand this out like again, we're using the, we are using the exact same steps as last time, but for but now we have the derivative of L with respect to our momentum. So that's just going to be partial Q over partial P, partial L over partial over partial Q, plus partial Q dot over partial uh, P times partial L over partial Q dot. So this is where it, it becomes crucial to note that Q and P are independent variables. They do not depend on each other. Since Q and P are independent variables, that means that the derivative of Q with respect to P is going to be equal to zero. So, so this means that this entire term goes away to zero. Well, what, well, what about this term over here? Well, partial L over partial Q dot is just how we define the momentum, right? So now our e equa equation heavily simplifies down to partial L tilde QP QP over partial P equals partial Q dot over partial P times P. We can rewrite this as partial over partial Q, sorry, partial over, over partial P of, of PQ dot minus Q dot. Since this derivative evaluates to partial P over partial P, Q dot plus partial Q dot over partial P times P. And P over P is just one and we have a minus q dot, so this q dot will just cancel out with this one, and this is and this is what is what we had over here. So we are allowed to rewrite to rewrite this as this. So we can now just solve for our derivative of the generalized position by subtracting both sides by the middle term over here to get partial L tilde of Q and P over partial P minus partial over partial P, P Q dot minus, sorry, equals Q dot, equals minus Q dot, actually. We can then just multiply both sides by a negative sign to get partial over partial P, P Q dot, minus partial L tilde QP over partial P equals Q dot. We can then just factor out the partial derivative to the front to get PQ dot minus L tilde of QP to be equal to Q dot. And then again, we can use our Hamiltonian definition where H is defined as PQ dot minus L tilde. So this entire term just be, just becomes H. 
So now we have partial H over partial P equals Q dot. And that's our second Hamilton equation. And yeah, though that is how you derive the Hamilton equations, which we will just in input our Hamiltonian of our system. And by doing that, we will find our equations of motion for not just Q, but also P. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Have a great day. And thanks for watching.